Good morning, everyone. This is the time that we would like to acknowledge and welcome any new people that we have. If you're new, would you please stand up and tell us your name and where you're from? Hi, I'm Carolyn Ehrlich, and I'm from Prescott. Hi, Carolyn. Welcome. And you? I'm Marty Pope, and I'm just being from California. Hi, Marty. Welcome. Anyone else? All the rest of us are family then. We do have a packet of information out in the lobby for anyone new who would like more information about unity. We have a vision and a mission statement that we like to read in unison together. We envision a world joyfully transformed through spiritual awakening and our mission statement. Our mission is to demonstrate spiritual principles, inspire personal growth, and share love and joy. We do have some announcements. You can help yourself to a flyer that's out in the lobby that lists all of the upcoming events. If you um, are not on our Spotlight newsletter email list and would like to be, please contact Candy in the office. We're starting spiritual spirit circles in September. Do we have the book yet? Do we? No. We have no idea, but it'll be fun. So if you would like to join a spirit circle, there are flyers out there that will tell you the process. In the Flow of Life by Eric Butterworth. In the Flow of Life by Eric Butterworth, one of our favorite authors. Join us uh, downstairs following the service in the Fellowship Garden, and this is Birthday Sunday. So if you have a birthday in August, would you please stand and we're going to sing Happy birthday to the Unitics. Oh, wonderful. To you. Happy birthday. If you have an anniversary in August, do we have any anniversaries in August? No. Okay. If you'd like to find out more about volunteering, we have some wonderful opportunities in our youth ministry as a greeter and in fellowship. There are flyers in the lobby and the sign-up sheets are on the board across from the mailboxes. We have a new member class beginning in September. If you're interested in becoming a, a member or you just want to have some new information about Unity, that's the place to get it. You can fill out one of the blue membership cards and return it to the office and they will notify you of the dates. So let's welcome Richard back one more time. <laughs> Join us in singing Surely the Presence. time of meditation, I invite you to take a deep breath. 
and allow all the good that God is this day into your soul. That there is infinite good within you and all around you. For there is infinite God. And as you take a deep breath and open your mind, your heart, your soul to the flow of God's greater good, for infinite love and joy and peace and power that's available to each and every one of us. And then as we quiet our mind, we relax our body. We are in the flow of the infinite. That you are not separate from your creator, but you are the living expression of all that God is. That whatever you desire today, whatever the blessing that you see, God is the one and only source. So take another deep breath. And feel the overflowing joy that comes from being connected to the infinite. To be the, being the living expression of all that God is. That whatever you need, whatever you desire, God is the source. And God is good. God is good. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For all that we are. For all that we have. For all the blessings of this day. So in the silence now, I invite you just to be open and receptive to the flow of God's good into every aspect of your soul. give thanks that we are being lifted higher and higher and higher into the greater goodness of God that our souls have been set free from yesterday's limitations that we know good and only good and that in every moment of every day we are being divinely blessed so we open to this next level of good and we say thank you, God, for every good thing, for every blessing, for every moment. And we dedicate it all to God. And so it ends. Amen. Where we all get down on ourselves from time to time and we all wish we could change the past well i know time is on our side and the passing days can heal the broken heart and a new to those who rise with the sun and a new 
chance to be what you were born to be. A chance to pave our destiny, to write it out like poetry, to make our dreams reality, to see it through indefinitely. A new day is here for you. Well, a new day will rise for you. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's hard to forgive the ones we love, ourselves, or the world that did us wrong. Gotta let it all go, leave it behind. Look up to the sky. Daylight is just a step away. And a new day will come to those who rise with the sun. And a new chance to be what you were born to be. A chance to pave our destiny, to write it out like poetry, to make our dreams reality, to see it through indefinitely. A new day is here for you. Well, a new day will rise for you. the only thing to lean on. Night is darkest right before the dawn. Let me hear you say a new day will come to those who rise with the sun. And a new chance to be what you were born to be chance to pave our destiny, to write it out like poetry, to make our dreams reality, to see it through indefinitely. A new day is here for you. Well, a new day will rise for you. Set a new day, a new day gonna rise. Mm -hmm. I said a new day, a new day gonna Dan, fabulous. Isn't it great? Dan, thank you, thank you. Wayne, as always, thank you for the prelude. I noticed Dust in the Wind. Was that Kansas, Dust in the Wind? You did a fabulous job with it. That was great. Like, great, I know that song, right? All right, th can I thank all of you? I love being your minister. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sometimes time away, you get to kind of take a look at your life and where you are and what's going on. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for the honor of being your minister. I want to thank all the guest speakers that we had last month and all the, the work, the staff and the board and the volunteers um, do to make this place work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, f I feel very blessed. Um, I believe, and, I, and I'll own this, that, that travel is a spiritual experience. It kind of doesn't always feel like that, right? Because you think you're going on vacation and you know, the, the, this travel stuff is just to get you away to wherever you're going and you think, but the, it's so amazing how much spirit works through travel, right? And so tonight, tonight, 
this morning, I, I know what time it is. I'm, I'm used to being in different time zones, but I'm really here. Um, I want to talk about what I learned on my summer vacation. Because I see over the last several thousand years that people have used travel as a spiritual process. People have been taking pilgrimages as a spiritual process. Christians, Jews, gone back to the Holy Land. You know, the Islam, people of Islam go to Mecca. You know, we, we see this over and over and over again of people taking pilgrimage or, or traveling as a way to take their next spiritual step. Now, sometimes, I don't know if you've had this experience with traveling, the experience that you get is not the experience that you thought you were paying for. <laughs> Has everybody had that experience? That you thought you were signing up for this, and the experience that you get was vastly different, but, but, it's, but it takes us to a different place. Right? And, I, and I see that over and over again, that there are some spiritual benefits to travel. One is that it, that it moves us out of our routine, right? That when we move out of our routine, somehow it makes us more open and receptive to feel the activity of spirit because we're not doing life the way we're doing, always do life. We're in a different environment. We're eating different foods. We're in a different spot. And so it really opens us up to look at ourselves, to, to have new experiences, to, to be more and more open to spirit, to really be more vulnerable through travel, right? Because we're sleeping in a new place and, it, and it's different, right? So there's an openness that when we get out of our, our routine, it also by disconnecting us from what we're familiar with Number two is that it actually requires a deeper connection within. You know, when we're traveling, there are a million choices that we don't have to make in our daily life that are just routine, that are just regular, that we just do it this way. And travel really requires that we trust our own inner guidance from every decision that we make. And, and as we're making these, these trips, as we're traveling, you really have to begin to trust your own inner guidance to lead you on. Three, there is a loss of control in traveling. <laughs> right? Flights are canceled, you know, there are highway delays, hotel problems. And, and as we lose control, our ego tends to react not always well. Does anybody else have some issue when you know that you've lost control with a situation where your reservation that you thought was done and that the hotel room was supposed to be there and you get there and they say, I'm sorry, sir, we're, we're full. Or you, you're, you're now going to be sleeping in the basement, you know, with a rollaway cot, right? Or whatever the situation is. There's a loss of control that really requires us to really expand our faith for we get experiences with new people, new foods, new cultures, and it has an impact of looking at our own behavior, looking at our own culture. We were, on the way home, we, 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 we drove um, from, here, from Phoenix to, to Michigan and back, and, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. But on the way home, we, we drove through Kansas, just a little tip of Oklahoma and Texas as we were coming back into, through New Mexico. And I, I stopped to get gas, and Jill went into the, the, the convenience store, the truck stop, and, and she got back in the car, and she said, I know we're in Texas. And I said, what do you mean by that? She said, every man opened the door for me and waited till I walked through. And she said, it, it, was, it was fabulous. She said, I almost just stopped and to see how long he'd wait there. This young man in his 20s just held the door for me. And she said, I feel, I love Texas, right? And, and, and it's that cultural difference, right? And sometimes we get to look at our own things or see our own behavior. And the fifth one that I think that one of the real spiritual benefits of travel is that we always have to go back to where we started. And anybody read the Harry Potter series or, or look at the Harry Potter movies? The first Harry Potter movie, I, I had, Harry Potter goes off, if you know the story, he goes off to be a wizard. 
and he learns all these wizardly things, and he learns his power as a wizard, and he learns that his parents were these amazing wizards, and he learns magic, right? He learns his own magic. He learns, he learns about the power within him. And then at the end of that first year of a wizard school, he has to go back and live with the muggles. And I thought, and, and the muggles were the people who didn't know their magic, right? They didn't know they had magic, right? And, and I always thought that that was so unfair. Like if you, just, if you just learn your magic, then everyone around you should know their magic. And I don't know about your life, but not everybody in my life knows their magic, right? Not everybody in, their, in, in my world really is awake to all that they are. And, and that, that we go and we have these wonderful experiences when we travel and maybe feel the presence of God or we see something that's just beautiful and it's transformative. But then we come back to right where we are. And, and the only thing that's changed is us. And that we have to really practice living our life from a higher point of view. And it's like, remember the, the last scene in Wizard of Oz where, where she, Dorothy goes and has this big adventure and has all these strange and wonderful things happen. And then at the end of the movie, you remember where she wakes up? In her own bedroom, in her own bed with, with her family around us. But she's different. And, and that's really all that we can really ask for in those experiences of life. Sometimes we want everybody else to change. Like sometimes it would just seem easier if everybody else was different. But one of the things I want to see is that the true spiritual process isn't about changing the world. And we, we'd all like it if everybody else was different. Because then we wouldn't have to do our own inner work. But the real spirituality of travel, the real spirituality in our life is that as we have a new experience, as we have a new faith, as we have a new relationship with God, as we live a new possibility, the outer world sometimes changes. But the real significance is that we change. So uh, Jill and I had dedicated this month to taking this trip. I, uh, you know, I don't talk about my wife a lot. Um, Almost eight years ago, she had, um, was diagnosed with breast cancer. She went through the whole breast cancer treatment, radiation, chemo, all that stuff. And she, she's, for the last eight years, she's been cancer free. But one of the things they gave her in the last little bit of her treatment was a drug to, to lower her hormone level. And, and it's a drug that, that millions, zillions of women get with no adverse effect. But for her, and a very, 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 very small number of people, it actually damages the sheeting around your nerves. And, and the consequence of that is that her nerve sensitivity is extremely heightened. So for the first year, she was pretty much in a dark room um, with you know, as little sound, as little sight, because the, the main three things that impact her are light, sound and elevation. And so um, when we set this intention to take this trip, because Jill wanted to go home to Michigan to see her family, to see her parents um, while they're still in their home and, and you know while her childhood home is still there, she wanted to go and take this trip. So we dedicated this month as, as a spiritual adventure. And it required you know, uh, her to be out and about in a much bigger way then she's usually out and about, right? It required her to be in the car and, and to put hours and hours of travel in. And it required her, us to go over the Continental Divide. And if you don't know the Continental Divide in New Mexico, is it, it's 7,200 feet. And she hasn't been up to 7,200 feet in eight years, right? We get her above 2,000 feet, it, it starts to have an impact on her. So we, we decided we were gonna take this trip. And the, and the word that we got before we left was acceptance, right? That that was the spiritual word and prayer that both of us got was acceptance. And I don't know about your ego, but when spirit says that I'm supposed to practice acceptance, there is a human part of me that says no way, right? <laughs> I, I don't know if you've got a fully developed ego, but my ego is fully developed. And my fully developed ego says that I want what I want when I want it. Has anybody ever lived that way? <laughs> Right? I want what I want when I want it, right? And that's what my ego does, right? It just wants what it wants when it wants it, right? And the idea of moving into acceptance 
is always part of the journey for me. It's always part of the, the process, right? But we knew that to, to get go from the Phoenix to the Midwest, you had to go over this thing. And, and it wasn't just like an hour. We were going to be in higher elevations for at least two days as we drove from Phoenix. Because you don't get down to below 2,000 feet to somewhere around Kansas. And, and we didn't even know that. But we have checked elevations in every path, every city, every town between here and Kansas City because we, we just needed to know where we were going to be. So, so we launched out on this trip knowing that that in the first couple of hours, we, we may have to turn around and go back, right? So we launched into it. We, we took off with the highest of hopes. And the first day, we made it all the way to Albuquerque, which was fabulous. Albuquerque, if you don't know, 5,200 feet, right? Still high elevation. It's not, not too far from here, right? The elevation of here. So um, we spent the night there. No problems. Everything's good. We, moved, we kept moving. And, and over and over again, what we had to practice was acceptance. So the first day, there was a, a road closure on, on I-40. And the road closure then created three more hours to that day of driving, right? And, and it was, um, you know how your mind says it shouldn't be like this? <laughs> right? It, does your mind ever play that trick on you that says it shouldn't be like this, I shouldn't be like this, this situation should be like this, this moment should be like this, or they shouldn't be like this? Or this trip shouldn't be like this, or the, they shouldn't close the road, or whatever it is, right? Your mind plays you that thing, that it shouldn't be like this. And then you get this opportunity, when it is like that, to say, how am I going to handle it? And, and our commitment was that we were going to, as quickly as we could, we were going to move into acceptance. So I, I, if you have never used the Waze program on your phone, or the app Waze, um, we got out the, the app on the, on the phone, and Waze had a detour. And we were about two hours into the, the road closure before one of us had the bright idea to actually see if there was a, another route other than just waiting in non-moving traffic. And Waze redirected us, and, and, it, and it worked out beautifully. The next day, Waze took us on a route that we would have never taken through northern New Mexico to get to Kansas City, and it, and it was just fabulous. And over and over and over again, we'd have these experiences that we didn't want, that we didn't ask for, that we didn't pray for, and yet they would turn out to be better than we could imagine. One of the things that happened was when we finally got to Michigan at Jill's home, a factory had been built in the, in the last seven years, just not too far from her parents' home, just outside of town. And, and it creates a constant hum, vibration, noise. And when you're sound sensitive, um, a constant irritating hum is, is not helpful. So we, we tried it the first night and it didn't work so well. And, and then we decided we were going to have to go stay in a hotel. And that wasn't, you know, that wasn't the plan, right? The plan was to, to be with mom and dad for the whole time and, and, and to stay in a hotel. Well, we, we got a, they don't live too far from Michigan State. We got this great hotel right on the campus, golf course. Olympic size swimming pool, unbelievably cheap, right, and, and only 20 minutes away. So we got to go to mom and dad's when we wanted to, and then we got to leave mom and dad's <laughs> when we wanted to. And I said, thank you, God. <laughs> right? And then over and over again, like everything that looked like a problem if you don't stay in that mental state, it's a problem, and you just stay in the place of accepting everything over and over and over again turned out to be a higher level of good. And, and it was so powerful to watch one obstacle, one situation after another be resolved in a way that was greater that I can imagine, right? And, and there were some real strong takeaways for us. There, were, there, was really, there, was, there was really four things that we both came away with feeling like that we had really learned from this experience. And the first one is that as soon as you think the thought it shouldn't be this way, at that moment you are in resistance. 
And it doesn't feel like resistance because it feels like your mind is just saying, calling it what it is. Like it shouldn't be this way or this person shouldn't be this way or this traffic shouldn't be this way or this weather shouldn't be this way or whatever it is. But the moment you think the thought, it shouldn't be this way, you're actually denying reality. You're actually at odds with what is. And the moment you think the thought, I shouldn't be this way or this person shouldn't be this way, it actually takes you out of acceptance and it takes you out of being blessed. And, and, the, and the other thought may be, instead of it shouldn't be this way, is this isn't the way I thought it was going to be. Because there's a difference when you say it shouldn't be this way, is that you're making a judgment on that situation and, and you're labeling that situation as wrong or bad or less than. But when you just say to yourself, I didn't think it was going to be this way, but I'm actually open to a greater blessing, it then moves you from your resistance to a place of acceptance. And once we move into acceptance, we get to really experience all the good that God is. So the first one is the, the moment our minds went into, or one of us would say, you know, it really shouldn't be this way, you know, or, or this isn't really right, or this isn't what we thought we were going to have, or this isn't what we planned. It's like, isn't that great? Right? Because at that moment we move. And that takes us to the second thing we found, that the more we moved into acceptance, the more gratitude we had for every experience. That acceptance creates gratitude over and over and over again. And, and you can't be in resistant, resistance and gratitude at the same moment. You can't be complaining about what is and be grateful for it in the same spot. You just can't, you can't do it. So the more that we move into acceptance, the more the gratitude became overflowing. We became grateful for, I wonder how this is going to work out, or I wonder how God's going to make this work or bless us, or how the, the next moment or the next situation was going to unfold. That every time we could move into acceptance, our gratitude went up. The third one. The third one is that, that um, without acceptance, it's very hard to love. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Like w when you're not accepting someone or some situation or even yourself, it's very hard to, to open your heart. Because as soon as you, your mind makes that judgment, right, your heart closes. I want you to think about somebody that you love to judge. Do you have a favorite person you love to judge? It could be a politician or a family member or a neighbor. It could be somebody you see on TV. Do you have a favorite person that you just love to judge the heck out of them? Right? Does everybody have one? Most of us do, right? We have somebody that we just love to judge because we just know how wrong they are, right? There's just very few things that are right. And I want you to just feel yourself judging them. And I want you to see if you can really judge them at the level that you love to judge them and keep your heart open. You can't do it. You can't be in judgment and in love. You can't be in resistance and in love in the same moment. You just can't do it. Because the moment your mind says there's something wrong with them, the moment you're in resistance to them, the moment you're in judgment, your heart automatically closes to protect you. And the only way that we can keep our heart open is to be in acceptance. So you ready for your homework? Right? I, I want you to play this game with me if you want to play, right? This is your little mini vacation with me this week, right? I, I want you to look at the areas in your life that you think are not right the people that you think are not right, the aspects of your body that aren't right, your finances, your job, your family, whatever it is that you are in resistance to, I want you just to become more aware of it, right? Because if you don't become aware of it, then we can never have a change, right? The conscious, becoming conscious, becoming aware is actually necessary to awaken to a higher level of good. So I want you to look at anything in your life that you've been in resistance to. 
And I want you to challenge you today to see how much could you move into acceptance. Notice, when you move into acceptance, notice how your heart opens. Notice how your, your gratitude starts overflowing. How you start looking for the good and the blessings and the moments. Right, that over and over again, what I, what I want you to see is, is that sometimes we have this vision for how our life is supposed to look, how a trip's supposed to go, how our family's supposed to act, how the world's supposed to behave, and we have this little window, and we, and we look at everything in our life from this little window. But the reality is that God is infinite good, and infinite good is much bigger than that. And that sometimes when our life isn't fitting in the little window that we've given ourselves, as we move into acceptance, what we begin to see is a much bigger picture. You know, if you've driven across the Midwest, there are some incredible views. Whether it's driving across vistas in, in New Mexico or Arizona or mile after mile of cornfields in Kansas, there's things that are just so beautiful. And as spiritual people, sometimes our vision gets a little narrow. And we think we know how everything's supposed to work. And sometimes I just think God's giggling at us. Right? That, that we have this plan. We have this understanding. We know how it should be. And the reality is that there's always more than that. That there's always more than that. So is there any area in your life that you haven't yet accepted? Is there any person in your life that you haven't yet expected, accepted? Is there any moment where you, your dominant thought is it shouldn't be this way? At that moment, I'm going to invite you to, to, to make a new choice. And the new choice would be, how do I accept this moment? How do I accept this person? How do I accept this situation? Just as it is, so that I get to be fully blessed. Are you willing to try that? All right, let's take that into prayer. I want you to hold, your, hold that thought in your mind as we move into this time of prayer. Take a deep breath. And I want you to feel the presence of God that is within you and all around you. That what if everything in your life got to be a blessing? What if every experience, every moment in your life got to be about for greater good? That in everything we accept, in everything we give thanks. Call it all good, my brother, when you face various trials. For you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. So in the name and through the power of the living Christ, we give thanks. And so it is. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. I'm glad to be home. Thank you, Richard, for helping me up the stairs. <laughs> this is our sacred time of giving. With a grateful heart, we celebrate all of the prosperity that you have shared with us. We appreciate all of the time, your talents, your treasures that you share with us. We affirm that God is our source. And we are blessed as we envision prosperity coming to and through us. I invite you to take in your hand that which you would share with us today and join with me in the blessing, saying the blessing on the screen. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give. <laughs> and all that I receive. <laughs> you may drop your offering in the basket. 
uh, in the back of the sanctuary as you uh, exit the service. Thank you. All right. So you ready for this week? Yes. So your job this week is to accept everything. <laughs> right? You got to accept everything about yourself. You got to accept everything about your family. You got to accept everything about this day. Accept, 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 and watch as your acceptance allows you to be more blessed than you can even imagine. And notice when your mind and your ego want to protest, right? The moment you think the thought, it shouldn't be this way, I want you to change that around and say, I'm looking for the blessing. Are you willing? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. God bless you all. Have a great week. Thank you for being here.